here. All right, now it's going cool. Fantastic. Hey, thanks a lot for uh, spending the time here. Hey, uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My name's John Lewis. I'm a DJ here at uh, University of California, Irvine. The station's KUCI. And uh, the reason why I'm calling, a couple of things. Uh, well, first of all, everyone's been wondering since the Ben is Dead magazine came out uh, earlier this year with uh, uh, Don Lewis, no relation to me, he's a good friend though, uh, right. did a phone uh, interview with you. And uh, he was talking about, uh, that was I think during the gross issue, he was talking to you, uh, I guess just about uh, what you were up to, and at that time, I think uh, you weren't you weren't having any legal hassles. In other words, I don't think you were in jail. Uh, I wasn't in jail, but I wouldn't say I wasn't having any legal hassles. Okay, all right. Uh, I've got legal hassles more than I, I can dare <laughs> to talk about. That's right. Hey, and the reason why I'm calling today is uh, in the article it mentioned, uh, uh, I think Peter Yarmouth uh, was his name, was uh, mentioning that, uh, let's see, tomorrow you were destined to... Uh, yeah, commit suicide on stage, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so has a lot of people been bugging you about this lately? Well, I mean, people that know the situation that I'm in ought to have realized that I've been in prison for the last nine <laughs> months, and uh, obviously while I'm in prison, I can't go through with the deal. And, right. But uh, what has happened is the uh, Michigan Department of Corrections um, is basically trying to discredit me. They're trying to uh, say that I'm a threat to society and a threat to myself, and they want to continue to lock me up. Uh, uh, so here I am again, you know. Uh, when I get out, like I said, I will do it. But at this point in time, I, I'm not going to set another date because obviously uh, being in prison has opened up some more avenues for right. uh, my animosity, and I got a lot of battles uh, when I get out. The only, the only way I will commit suicide, and, and when I do commit suicide, will be when my soul has reached its peak. And at, at this point in time, I've still got a lot of people that I intend to fuck up and and. Uh, Time to get my revenge back. Okay. That way. All right. Now I'm going to have to ask you. This is a decision you've made. You you decided when you uh, leave this planet, it's going to be by your own hand. Right. Absolutely. That's that's the greatest thrill of all. It's uh, and I and I want to die on stage basically because that is the way I live my life. So. Right. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know how to say this, uh, so I'll just say it. Um, a lot of people, I hate to say, are kind of looking forward to this, but... Uh, well, the people that are looking forward to it obviously don't understand what I'm all about. They're the people that come to the show and see the spectacle, and those are the people that generally get caught in the crossfires and get the shit beat out of them. They're the first ones that go run to the police right. about what I do. So, you know, if, if their whole intention is just to see me commit
by pulling that song. I mean, that, that, right. was, that was the most cowardly thing that, that he ever did. And, and I have no... Re All right, there we go. Now it's recording. Cool. All right. Um, okay. I don't erase anything because I'm only doing this once. I know. I hear you, pal. Your time is too precious right now. And, you know, I hate to dwell on this right now, but, um, okay, uh, your name's Gigi, and uh, I guess because uh, they called you that because your real name when you were actually born was Jesus Christ Allen. Right, Jesus Christ Allen. Okay, I can't help but see some parallels here in a... Uh, well, the way I look at it, I think you're kind of martyring yourself for for this cause. I mean, do you see it that way? I see it as I'm looking out for my own soul. I mean, my soul is, uh, is has always been uh, actually quite quite uh, out of control. Sometimes I don't think my body can even control it. I'm doing it for myself because I feel that when one commits suicide at his peak of life, then he then then he's destined to be stronger in the next life. If 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 when you've got everything said and done, why linger, right? Why hang out? Why waste everybody's time? Why waste everybody's breath? When you got everything said and everything done, fuck it. You know, blow your brains out and, mm -hmm. and you know, le at least leave this earth, earth with some sort of integrity and at least have your have your soul intact and have that, you know, have it be the strongest possible thing in the universe. Right. You know, before I try to argue the other point, I'm going to mention what you're saying there really parallels <laughs> Actually, a lot of Eastern thought, um, a lot of uh, Hinduism, and actually... Well, I think it's, uh, it's essential. I mean, what your soul is, is your basic, uh, who you are. And, uh -huh. and to let that die, I mean, a lot of people are, are dead anyway. Right. They're living dead, so they might as well, you know, blow their brains out. And, you know, plus it's such a thrill anyway. I mean, the whole, the whole build-up to it would be like such a great orgasm. All right. Violent death really excites me. Okay, and uh, I'm going to talk about the violence now. Um, you kind of had a violent beginning, I guess, from day one. Um, yes, I did. Uh, uh, for the person out there listening who doesn't know, and uh, this is all just uh, conjecture and what I've heard through third person, but uh, apparently, I guess, uh, when you were very young, uh, your own mother tried to take your life. Is that true? Uh, my father, actually, he had planned an Allen family suicide right up to the point where he had graves dug under the house in the cellar. And, uh, yeah, he, he was planning on it. And then, uh, I think in the middle of the night, my, my mother had, uh, had sort of kidnapped us and took us out of that situation. But, yeah, that, that's, that's right. And uh, would you say your childhood and your life is, let's see, uh, basically outside of normal? Well, I don't blame anybody for who I am. If anything, I blame them for, for creating a very strong individual. I've never been one to seek friendships or relationships. I've always sort of built these walls around myself, which gave me inner strength. And, and I felt the need not, not to be associated with anyone. I, I figured, you know, I, I, I like myself. I can deal with myself. I don't, and it makes me that much stronger because I don't have to give myself to anybody. What I obtain, what I take, I put back in. And, and other people have to share, and, and I don't share with anybody, I, I just take. Okay, now all, all this started, I guess, uh, when you uh, started in music, in, in a band, right? Well, yeah, what, or did it start before thing then? that I ever got involved with music to begin with is as a weapon, as, as a revenge. I mean, it was never anything where I wanted to be popular or, or get a, a, a record deal. My whole purpose to start a band was to go in and and trash all the clubs that we hated and beat the shit out of all the people that we didn't like and, and uh, just completely uh, revenge. That was, that was my whole motive. Right, and then uh, I guess from there, though, uh, what I understand, you started out pretty, uh, I guess, kind of like a hard rock band, and I guess, I don't, I don't even want to call it performance, but I guess you just kind of kept letting, uh, pushing it a little bit more and pushing a little more. Well, it wasn't a performance. It was the way I was living my life. I mean, right. Uh, the way I lived, just I, I brought to the stage. I, I would build everything up inside of me like an atomic bomb, and then I would get on stage and release it. I mean, it, it's it's hardly performance art in, in the in the in the stage of like a, a Karen Finley or right. a Lunch, where they're up there, you know, wanting to be accepted by the audience. I'm up there for my own self only. I mean, the the crowd is the enemy. I mean, they're there for me. I'm not there for them. Okay, um, because of that statement there. Can you, I won't say blame, but can you see why people would say, like well, the state of Michigan perhaps, would say why you're a threat to either yourself or 
others? I'm doing it for rock and roll. I could give a shit what, what Michigan thinks. Uh, I mean, are you saying because I look at the audience as my enemy, I should be in prison? Well, I think that's what they were, the, what they're thinking. Well, I'm looking at it this way. Okay, when you come to my show, there's a lot of people that come to my show just to sightsee. Right. Those are the people that are, that, that, that are going to leave bloody. Right. With broken bones and, and, like I say, first wants to call the police. So I, I can't tell who's coming to my show. Just You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, hey, hold on for a second. Yeah. Okay, um, hold on, hold on. Okay, you there? Yep. All right. Okay, so you spent five, seven years uh, in jail. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, the other things. Um, do you fear death? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, I, I, I seek death. And, and I think because of the fact that in my everyday life I seek death, that's probably why I accelerate life, because if, if you fear nothing, you'll go for everything, and you'll get whatever you want. Do you feel your life's been that way? Yeah. Okay. And, uh... I mean, that's the way I live my life. I, I mean, that's just the kind of person I am. It's brought, you know, tomorrow's going to be the last day, so I'm going to take every day. If I got, if I got a dollar, I'm going to spend 99 cents, and, uh... You know, I ain't gonna worry about what's gonna happen the next day because it might not be there. Have you always lived this way, or would, I mean, even yeah, I, I, I really pretty much always have. I mean, it, it's it's gradually progressed. I mean, you you can't you can't take uh, you can go back 13 or 14 years ago with my first album, and you can follow it all the way up to my uh, most current album. And every single album and every single band is basically. Uh, well, it was in my life at that time. Right, right, right. And, whoops, I got a little feedback here. Let me pull back. And, uh, for, have you ever, uh, have you ever thought of, like, maybe if you lived in another culture, like, say, India or something, that, uh, you would probably have a perfectly normal life? What I mean by normal yeah, yeah, is... I, I do. I, 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 know what you, I know what you're saying. Probably. Okay. All right. And, uh, another thing is this. Uh, when you finally do decide to, uh, leave this world, uh, what do you think, uh, what do you think people are going to say? Well, I mean, what do you think they... Okay, there we go. Do you remember that thought? Yeah, I guess, the, you know, I don't know what the, you know, you'd have to ask them that, but, uh, I would hope that they would remember me as the death-defying rock and roll terrorist who, uh, you know, whose whole life was dedicated to his rock and roll mission. Okay, and let's talk a little about it, because this all started with a band. I guess uh, the name of the band is, uh, well, when it started, was G.G. Allen and the Jabbers. Is that the right. still still the name? Absolutely not. That was uh, hundreds of years ago. Uh, the, the band I'm with right now is G.G. Uh, Allen and the Murder Junkies. <laughs> okay, and who are the members? Uh, is your brother Merle one of the Merle's members? Merle's on bass, a uh, guy named Dino is on drums, and uh, a guy named Bill Weber is on guitar. And uh, they, uh, they were with me for the year that I was on parole, and uh, they're still with me now. Okay, and uh, you're scheduled now to leave, is it Jackson State Prison in March? March 11th of 93 is what's been uh, put down on my paperwork. And do you think there'll be any reason uh, why they'll for some reason keep you in, or do you think... Well, they can't, because I'm maxing out. I've, I've done my time. I, I got a four-year sentence, and they let me out on parole, and I'm back uh, finishing up the four years, so uh, they got to let me go this time. Okay. All right. And uh, once uh, you get out of Michigan, are you guys going to go back and uh, try to pick up where you left off? Immediately. Okay. Immediately. The first thing we'll do is uh, I've got a couple of record companies that uh, want to put out the next album. Uh, um, we may record it out, out that way, out in L.A. I think that, uh, you're probably familiar with a guy named Kim Fowley. Right, exactly. Uh, he, he's expressed interest in producing it. And a uh, company over in Paris, Maryland Records, wants to put it out. So I don't know. I can't say for sure that's going to be the label. We, we're going to record and then right back on the road. Right. Okay. And i got to ask you, um, being on the inside uh, so long, do you feel comfortable there? And uh, uh, or... You don't want to ever feel comfortable anywhere. I never, I never feel comfortable anywhere. I, I can't put myself in that position. Whenever I feel comfortable, I'll do something to throw a monkey wrench in there to make right. me very uncomfortable because I cannot live in comfort. So, absolutely not. In here is, for me, like what most people would, when 
when you, when people go to college, this this has been my college. It's made me a better criminal. It's uh, made me a better fighter and made me a stronger person. So I, I I used it to my advantage. Okay. Hey, Gigi, hold on for one second. Hold on. Okay, there we go, Gigi. Yeah, you got it. Okay, uh, hey, anything new uh, you learned or anything you observed lately uh, on the inside? This is, if it even concerns well, I, you. I saw somebody die the other day. Okay, what, uh, an inmate fighting or? No, actually, he just fell over and died. I don't know if it was uh, the food or what. No, I've seen, I've seen guys get their heads split open. I've seen uh, people get stabbed. I mean, you see everything in here. I mean, I'm, I'm living with, with uh, murderers and rapists. I mean, I'm, it's all in here, man. Or, I mean, what, what I live with in here, you, you people in the outside world uh, would just would have no idea what it's, what it's like. Right, right. No, I, I, it, makes it, it makes it tough. Right, I'm sure. Um, i, I got to ask you this, too. What's the worst you think you've ever hurt anybody, whether... I don't know, because a lot of times I've left cities and never found out until I've left, actually, things that have happened. I, I've heard stories, and I don't know. I've heard that... Uh, I cracked somebody's skull. I heard I, you know, I broke somebody up. I don't. I mean, these are things that I hear when I leave town, and and I know that clubs have been sued because of things that I've done to people. And uh, but like I say, you know, it's 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 like the, uh, the environment that you put yourself in. If you put yourself in the environment of a GGI performance, you're putting yourself in the environment that you're you're, you're pretty likely that you're going to get hurt. Because right. I'm, I'm going to make sure of it. Right. I'm, I'm looking for it. You know? Right. I'm like a snake. I'm kind of. I'm a hard person to read because a lot of people could sit beside me and think, uh, you know, I'm probably the nicest guy in the world. And then a second later, I can slice your throat and, and you know, whatever. Well, so I, I don't give myself away. I, I, I let people see what I want them to see, and then uh, I do what I want to do. Yeah, um, I was just thinking of a kind of a lame. Uh, proverb or something. It was off a movie. I think it was a Woody Allen movie about a, a frog uh, trying to get, uh, and, a, and a scorpion trying to cross a river. Right. And uh, the scorpion goes, hey, frog, let me get on your back, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll cross the river. And the frog's going, no way, man. You know, you'll sting me, and, I'll, and then I'll die, and we'll both die. And uh, the scorpion says, no, that's not going to happen. So the scorpion gets on the back of the frog, and guess what happens? The scorpion just starts stinging the frog, and the frog's sitting there drowning, and, and the scorpion's drowning. He's going, man, why'd you do that? Why'd you do it? We're going to die. And he goes, I just couldn't help myself. The thing is, I'd wait till I got to the other side, then sting him. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a twist. Okay, hey, um, uh, now a, a couple other things, uh, real briefly. I, I don't know how much time you have. Uh, I got plenty of time. Oh, cool. Then, um, then I, I guess we can talk a little bit longer. We'll just have to be transferred. Yeah, well, I got at least ten or fifteen more minutes, I think. Great. Okay. Um, uh, what I was getting back to, uh, you're on the inside, and uh, right now, I don't know if you're concerned with too much of uh, the outside world, but in America, this is an election year. Uh, oh, I know what's going on. Okay. Um, do you keep up on what's going on in the world? Are you an observer? Oh, absolutely. You have to. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not that it matters, because I live so far underground that... I mean, it doesn't matter to me who wins the election. It doesn't matter to me because I'm 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 going to live my life the way I've always lived it anyway. So, uh, uh, but but you got to keep in touch with what's going on because if you're if you're in a war with somebody, you got to know the opponent, right? To defeat them. So, uh, but but as far as the election, uh, it wouldn't affect me either way, any way who wins because they're all a bunch of fucking. Uh, you know, nobody that I'm going to abide by anyway. <laughs> right. Okay, and another thing uh, I was going to ask you is uh, with, ah, um, oh, shoot, hold on. I'll gather myself. Uh, I was going to say something halfway sane, and now I'm thinking, uh... Cut all that out. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, I'll, I'll just let it... look good. I'll just, no, I'll just let it flow then. Uh, what I was going to ask you, oh, hey, you seem very lucid. You seem very, uh... You know what you're doing. Now, uh, oh, absolutely. Doesn't a uh, leader has to know where he where he's where he's leading? Okay. Has well, with That's all this not... with all this time in jail and everything, has they ever sent like a psychiatrist or anything like that? I've seen more psychiatrists and counselors and sex therapists and, and AA and NA, and I've been through every goddamn program the system's got to give. And uh, I just built a brick wall around myself and. Uh, I, you know. Right. Okay. What do they 
they say about you? What do, what do they say? Do they, what label do they put? I'm an antisocial personality disorder. I'm a masochist. I'm a, I'm a, what did it say on my PSI report? I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm a psychopath. <laughs> well, they, they got me. They got some great things. So they, they uh, yeah, they didn't. Uh, they, those are a few they've got down. Okay. How do the other inmates treat you? Do they say? And again, how do the other uh, uh, inmates treat you? They leave me alone because they know that, you know, it's, it's like I said before with the snake thing. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about, but, uh, you know, when you piss me off, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go after you. And that's just the way it's laying in here. Uh, I've, I've had some people test me, and uh, they found out that uh, they regretted it. But for the most part, they all think I'm crazy. So, uh, yeah, they, 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 uh, they don't fuck with me. Okay, you call yourself a masochist, but do you do you ever succumb to people willingly, or do you always go down in a fight, or, or how, how do you deal with a, a type of conflict? Sexually, it could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind being a victim once in a while. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, I, I do what I have to do, and if it comes down to a fight, then it comes down to a fight. But the bottom line is that I'm going to do what i got to do. You know, if, if i got to get across that bridge, i got to get across that bridge, and then if i got to set it on fire, i got to set it on fire, but i got to get across it first. Right. Okay, um, everyone's been talking about how much damage you've caused on other people and, uh, you know, how much uh, destruction you've left, but you, uh, you're a victim yourself of uh, people, I guess, uh, getting tired of you and uh, working you over? Well, I don't mind that because, see, uh, I put myself through tragedy and, and pain every day because uh, to go through that pain, like I said, has made me stronger. And, and, and the pain that I, the self-inflicted pain and, and the mutilation that I inflict upon myself just makes me that much stronger of a person. And I find that on tours or in everyday life that if you put yourself through tragedy with each day, then you'll be able to face tragedy when it hits you and you'll be able to face any situation. So that's... Uh, that's right. Right. Hey, do you feel if you were in another time or if circumstances were different, you'd be a warrior or anything like that? Or a Probably, I, I, I guess. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a warrior now, so, I mean, uh, what, what would change? Right. Right. It's just uh, you have a different enemy, I guess, instead of, uh, I guess... Well, I don't know. There's still going to be people around. I just, I'm just, really, I hate people. Yeah. Would you ever, if, if you had a perfect world, if there is such a thing, and I know you keep changing your world, uh, do you think you'd ever be happy if it was just you alone and perhaps everyone subservient to you? Or I don't know if I would ever want to be completely happy. That seems like a, quite a boring life to me. Um, uh, I'm, I'm lost here now. I just lost my thought. I, I, but, I, but I don't... Uh, I do like to be alone. Mm -hmm. I, I can deal with being alone, but I don't think that I would ever be happy in any situation. Right. But as far as if somebody would have dropped me on an island all by myself with no other people, uh, yeah, I'd be all right. I can, I, you know, I can still jerk off and, you know, I can still keep myself company because I still got a mind and uh, I can just explore it. Okay. Um, it, it's written somewhere that uh, you don't, uh, you don't have girlfriends or relationships. In fact, that you. I have. I have. Uh, <laughs> girls, but they're not girlfriends. I mean, I, I find hookers, or I find, uh, you know, I'm into, uh, I'm into sex and violence and, and uh, prostitutes and hookers and, and nasty street girls. I'm not into love and all that. It's just boring, too. It goes with the happiness thing. I'm, I'm more into uh, the quick fix of sex right. and then get on with it. And like, as I said before, that way I don't have to give myself to anybody. I can take what I want and then find the next Greyhound out of town. <laughs> uh, I have to ask you, uh, did, did you ever use drugs or anything like that? I ever used drugs. What drugs haven't I ever used? Okay, I guess I guess that's what I should I guess asked. you could say in 1989 I was like a, a walking dead man. When they arrested me, I was so uh, emaciated and I was uh, shooting heroin, loading needles and putting them in my suitcase and on the road we would stop at truck stops and uh, I'd shoot those fuckers in my veins and just, you know, keep going. And uh, I was doing everything, everything uh, and anything. Uh, like I said, I, 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 I was walking towards death, and I was just waiting for it. I mean, I was looking at death every day. I just didn't know when it was going to take me, but it was there. I mean, I was playing with it. I was fucking it. And 
you know, I was sucking it and bleeding it, and I was I was in that death pit. Uh, but uh, I'm still here. Right. My soul wasn't ready. Right, right. And um, uh, I had something there when you were saying that you were fucking it in the pit. Hold on, it'll hit me. I was going to ask you uh, about drugs, heroin, hold on, heroin, drugs, uh, damn it, I just lost it, so I'm going to have to go on to something else, it'll come back to me, that's how it happens. Carry on. Okay, um, okay, Gigi, that's what I was going to ask you, um, your life, you kind of live from moment to moment, do you ever document anything, like, do you write? Anything down? Do you keep a diary? Do you keep a journal? Has that ever appealed to you? Basically, the journals and the writings are the albums. Okay. I, when I'm in the studio, that's when it all comes out of me, and, and I really do inventory of my mind and my life, and that's that's where my lyrics come from. Um, uh, I have written, but I'm not the type of person to, that's going to just carry a pencil and a pen and, and write something down when I see it. I'm going to live it, and then after I've lived it, I'm going to do it on record and on stage, so that's where that, there is an autobiography right now being written about me uh, through uh, many interviews and, and uh, newspaper articles and so, so forth. So by 1983, you'll be able to buy the book and, and know everything. Okay. And uh, I guess uh, your albums, they're available through, uh, how would anyone uh, get a hold of well, them? Well, a lot of record stores don't have the guts or the courage to carry them, so uh, you really, uh, performance records in uh, New Jersey uh, deals with a lot of them. Uh, uh, there's a lot of bootlegs uh, and things. I, I can't really tell you that. I don't know. I guess right. you have to, you know, good luck. Yeah, you've been out of the loop for a while. Take a gun in the nearest record store <laughs> and fucking tell the motherfucker you better order you. Um, and uh, your brother Merle, um, I, you have a, you have a family. I mean, you have an immediate family, correct? Yeah, yeah I got a bunch of them. Oh, you got a bunch of them. <laughs> got about six fathers and six mothers. Which ones do you want to get into? Yeah, well, uh, it's, uh, basically the only the only uh, uh, you know my brother and I is different. It's completely different as we are. Um, he's he's a great bandmate and. Uh, He's, he's got a wife, and uh, they do their thing. We're, we're completely opposites, but uh, he's he's still blood. Uh, so yeah, we're we're about the only two left. Right, right. And um, uh, would you say he's the uh, alter ego of you? I mean, like, well, yeah, possibly. Okay. And how does he feel about? Well, I mean, I'm going to ask you. Like, when you're gone, uh, does he support that, or, or? I don't think he does, but but he supports. What I'm all about. He, he knows if I've made that decision that he, he will support it. He is the type of person that is not going to try to talk me out of it because he knows I'm too strong headed and strong willed and he knows exactly what I, am, I stand for. Um, he's expressed um, the fact that he, was, he wasn't sure he'd want to be in the band during the last show and uh, right. my band had a meeting about it and uh, they finally said that it, it, if I wanted them there, they would be there. Yeah. That remains to be seen, but we'll find out. Okay, well, I talked to him, and he seemed pretty anxious uh, for you to get out. And uh, yeah, he, he, he put the band together for me uh, there in New York, and uh, he's done a real good job over the last year while I've been in prison at, uh, you know, maintaining them. Right, right. And uh, when you get, well, you may not want to talk about when you get out, uh, are you going to call any place home or are you going to just stay on the road? Stay on the road. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, any, I don't know, with your record, though, you probably wouldn't be able to leave the country, would you? Well, as a matter of fact, I, I will be off parole. I have a number of states uh, where I have warrants but will not extradite. And mm -hmm. as long as they will not extradite me or the fact that I have no warrants, I have talked to some some uh, legal advisors, and they say that I could possibly obtain a passport, and if that's the case, we will go to Europe next year. Okay, how about California? Can you come to the state? Well, yeah, but uh, I don't know what it is with you people out there, man. I, it, it, we can't get a fucking show out there in L.A. <laughs> yeah. We played Frisco a few times, but L.A. just, uh, I don't know what the hell.
hell to deal with. They just can't uh, deal with it. it yeah, it's a, it's a different place. The last time I'm thinking of something like this probably happened was when uh, back in, uh, gosh, it seems so long ago in the 70s when Throbbing Gristle came. And yeah. uh, that's probably the last time something like that happened. Well, it seems to me, and I'm sure I won't win any fans over by this statement, it seems to me everybody out in fucking L.A. is more on this goddamn jump on the bandwagon alternative or, or somewhat, you know, how we look and how our hair is cut and this kind of deal. They, they don't seem to be really into it for what it's all about. So uh, I'm not saying every band, but I'm, I'm saying the overall picture that I've seen. So uh, That, actually, your opinion has been shared, actually, by quite a few people. Um, so uh, it's not exactly, uh, you're not, I mean, you're not misleading anybody. I'm not alone. You're not alone. It's uh, it's definitely, music is different than what uh, rock and roll was. Yeah, I was out there last year, and we were hanging out out in that area, and uh... Okay, go ahead, you're in San Diego? Yeah, we played in San Diego, and that's, uh, I ended up in the hospital a couple of days after that, but we uh, went through LA, I think we uh, stayed with some people somewhere around that area, and uh... Ah, uh, shut the fuck up. Ah, uh, that's just a lot of speaker here. Uh, yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, um, now what the fuck was I talking about? Uh, you were in San Diego, you went yeah, to... Yeah, we were in San Diego, and then we, we hung out in L.A. for a while. We went down to the whiskey, and uh, it just seemed, uh, I don't know, I pulled it down my pants and started running around the street. <laughs> sure, this, this was pretty funny, actually. Uh, did you uh, get any gratification, or was it just lame? <laughs> well, people just got to look at right me like I had fucking a uh, psychopath, and I, that's okay. Okay. Uh, all right. Is there any city or any uh, particular time you were on stage or off stage that was, you know, pretty much uh, you felt good or whatever the word is? You felt like uh, you know it, what really feels good to me. What? I'm gonna be very honest. Go it's ahead. The best, the best time, the best feeling to me in my life, the greatest high is being on that stage and just watching that blood come out of me. Just, just cutting myself and just feeling that blood, just knocking the shit out of myself. And just tearing myself apart, man. That's like the greatest high for me there is. And, and a lot of people do it. A lot of people try to imitate me. I won't mention any names. Right. Who they are. But I mean, for me, it's just such gratification. It's just, it just puts me so in touch with with my inside. And, and, and I just feel so, it, it's like I can go out and, and make it through another day after that. Because without that, I, 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 I don't know. It'd be real tough. Right, right, right. So that, that's, I mean, uh, you can take that as you will, but I, I, that's really when I'm, when I'm really the most in, in touch with myself is, is when I'm on that stage. Okay, um, I guess, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything like that, but I guess they would say, um, yeah, okay, you're somewhat of a masochist, but um, at the same time, um, you're kind of living, I think, a little more than a lot of people do, and uh, I don't know if I'm making sense there. A lot there. of people fantasize about what I do. There you go. I would never have the balls to do it. I think a lot of people um, try to get into it, but they really don't get into it as complete as I do. I mean, I give my whole life for it. It's, uh, I don't know, it's just, to me, it, it, it's, it's a very uh, necessary thing for me to do. For other people, uh, it may be a hobby. I don't know. Okay. Here's a here's a I don't, nightmare or I don't I don't know what you want to call it. What would happen? Or this is supposition. Maybe you don't even know. Say uh, you're conscious, but for some reason your body was uh, incapable of moving. Um, I, I'm just throwing that at you. I mean, how would yeah. you how would you react to something like that? If my if my body was incapable of moving. Well, yeah. I, I mean, say like you were wheelchair bound or something, or if you were quadriplegic. But well, as long as I could still get on stage, and as long as I still had something to say, I'd, I'd go with it. And, and if I didn't have anything to say and I couldn't get up on the stage, then I'd say it's time to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I could get up on stage in a wheelchair. Okay. <laughs> I was asking something very similar to that. Hold on, I'm starting to blank out now too. Um, uh, I'm going I'm to push it back to you. Anything you want to say right now, or 
I think I pretty much said it. I think uh, I think people would better wake up though and 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 understand who's for the real thing and like I said, who's the frauds and the phonies and the rock and roll underground. And I think the time is now. So uh, you've only got yourself to blame. Right. Do you think life's too easy for most people? Yeah, I do. And do you think uh, this world would be different? I think people people look for an easy way. People are looking for an easy life. Uh, just the opposite. I'm, I'm looking for all the obstacles. It just it, it just makes me tougher that much more. Of a way. It just makes it more interesting. I'm you know I'm I'm an adventurer. Somebody tells me, well, you know, you have three roads to take. That road over there is cool. You'll make it no problem. These other two roads, you're gonna face danger and you might get killed. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the danger and, and the death over the, over the safe way. Yeah, I don't know. If I die, fuck it. At least I at least it, it's, it's been a, a thrill. Right, right. I'm going to have to ask you, uh, do you have any feelings uh, about anything after death? Is that it? Or get... No, I feel that my soul is going to go on. I feel if I kill myself while I'm in my peak, I think my soul will become that much stronger in the next universe. I think my soul is, is incapable of dying. I think when my body dies, my soul is just going to be... Okay, go ahead. You said... I said that uh, yeah, death is going to be a great adventure, and, and I look forward to it because my soul will, uh, will just go on to uh, higher heights. You know, with that type of thinking in mind, do you think like just life is kind of like just in the way uh, of getting there? Sometimes I do. Yeah. Hmm. Like I said, if I if I had nothing here to do, if I had if I had all my business business taken care of, I'd be gone. Right. But uh, uh, until as as long as I can remain a constant threat and a constant danger, as long as I got something to say for the rock and roll, for the real, true, non-conformist rock and roll, mm -hmm. then I'm going to say it, and, and I'm going to continue to be that dagger in the music industry's back, because they want to get rid of me. So I'm not going to give them the pleasure of leaving too early. I'm going to leave when the time is right for me, not when the time is right for them, because right now, the music industry needs to be destroyed. Right. And is there a time where you think uh, the music industry was, or I shouldn't say the music industry, but uh, the performers were on the edge? It was that... I think more so in, in years and years ago. I think they actually were living it before it actually became a, you know, a product or right. something when somebody nowadays, and you listen to any kind of radio or even records or whatever, you find that, or, you know, as soon as somebody hits a million others are trying to sound like them or look like them or it's all, uh, it's all very institutionalized. I think back years ago you probably did have more individualists. Right, right. And as an individualist, is there anybody... But even then, none yeah. of them have, have taken it anywhere near to the limits that I have. I, I think that, that, I mean, I'm willing to go until death. Who else is? Well, uh, you know, I'm going to ask you that. Is there anybody that you've heard of either in the past history or that you've met or that you've known that you, how should I say, admire? That I what? Admire, I guess, or? No, I really, I guess the only person I really admire is myself because uh, why would I admire anybody else when nobody else can come close to what I do? Right, right. You know, that, that, that's, uh, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. I can't even think of any bands that, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some bands out there that are true, that, that, that believe in what they're doing. I'm not, but I'm, I'm uh, you know, I don't know where they are. I haven't seen them. Okay. A uh, couple more questions. Hey, is there anything uh, you haven't done that you're looking forward to do or that you, or do you ever plan anything like that? Well, if there's something that I want to do, you can, you can best believe that I'm going to do it. Okay, so there's always something. Uh, there's always something. There's always a bigger battle ahead, and when you beat that one, then, you know, if you, if you win or lose, it doesn't matter, because if you lose one fight, you win the next two, and if you win that one, then you just keep going. You know, you always keep going until you can't go any longer, and then you fucking put the gun in your fucking mouth and blow your motherfucking brains out. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, I guess uh, with, with, with that uh, in mind, um, when you do, uh, if you ever, well, you made up your mind, when you do decide to uh, take your own life, is there, uh, have any idea how it's going to happen? I mean, not... I'm not, I don't really want to discuss that. I, I do know, I have some ideas of what I'm going to do. Uh, let's, just go, let's just say it's going to be very bloody. Okay. Wow. <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> I don't know what to say, GD. I, well, I mean, think we could end it at that. Okay, I think I we got to run here in a minute anyway. But, okay. Uh, put 
that together, and you'll have a hell of a uh, Halloween show there. I know. Gigi, um, uh, I've only read about you, but after meeting or speaking with you, I'm going to be following you. I'll be calling you again probably in March. I'll be in touch with your brother. I'll make sure... Yeah, get in touch with Mo, and uh, when I get out, maybe we can do an updated interview. Yeah. Uh, hey, man. As, as long as you're on the level and... and I'm on the I'm level. I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting your time. I mean, you're going to do what you want to do, but, man, I think you got a lot of work to do, and I think... Uh, well, I'm going to do it, too. I think... Uh, I just got to get the listeners out there, rally them, play that interview. Get yeah, I... That. And what I want you to do is, you know, definitely make Merle a copy of that tape. Oh, definitely. And I'm not going to lie to you, we're probably going to end up bootleg. No, hey, no problem. No, no. With you, with you, you got my permission. Just make sure people hear it. Yeah, you, that's, you got my that's permission. the whole thing is I, I like doing interviews because I have, I have things to say, and, and they, they're important to say, so people will realize just how important this whole crusade is. Okay. okay. With, with that, I'll leave you and, and uh, be in touch with Merle, but, but by all means, send him that tape and play it tomorrow night on the radio. Okay, Gigi, I'm going to leave one last note, man. I all hope right. you live a long life. Go on, because you do have a lot to do. I do. You do. And uh, I hope uh, if it ever happens, it's uh, in your later years, man. Okay, keep spreading right. the disease, man. Okay, take care. We'll see you around. Bye-bye.